Hey, what is going on guys? Ben here. This is my review of the iPhone 7 Plus. In this video, I'll be focusing on five major topics. Overall design of the phone, the new home button, or lack thereof, the removal of the headphone jack, a few new camera changes, and finally just any other additional thoughts that I have on the phone. Let's check it out. Alright guys, so this is the 7 Plus. This is the 128 gig model in matte black. Matte black is one of the two new colors Apple brought to the iPhone 7, the other being the gloss black. While I absolutely loved the look of gloss black, it was just a fingerprint magnet. I could not get over how many fingerprints it showed, as well as apparently it was much easier to scratch, as I saw in a few videos and pictures. So I went with matte black, and I'm happy with my choice. I much prefer it to the space gray of the previous models, so I have nothing to complain about with the matte black color. As far as exterior design changes, there aren't that many. Uh, the two biggest ones you'll notice are the larger camera bump due to the additional lens, and obviously the removal of the headphone jack, which I will be discussing later on in this video. They also rerouted the antenna bands. They go around the edge of the phone now, as opposed to across the back, which I think is a nice touch because it makes them less noticeable. That's enough of design. Let's move on to one of the two very controversial changes of the iPhone 7. That would be the changes to the home button, or lack thereof. So, at first glance, it looks exactly like the home button of the 6 and 6S. Um, but what Apple has done is removed any moving parts. So this is not a button anymore. This is just a flat touch surface. But what happens is when you touch it, Apple has added a Taptic Engine. For those of you who aren't quite sure what a Taptic Engine is, it's really pretty simple. It's basically a combination of tap and haptic feedback provided to you by vibrations. So when you think you press on the new home button, all that's happening is the Taptic Engine is vibrating to make it seem like the button's actually been pressed when really nothing has actually happened. At first this was a very weird concept. It felt way different than an actual button press, but within 20 to 30 minutes I was actually really comfortable with it. And after the first day, believe it or not, I actually preferred the Taptic Engine simulated button press to an actual real button press. I did not think that would ever happen. I was totally surprised by it. I still am a little bit, but I think it shows just how cool Taptic Engine feedback can be. So kudos to Apple for not only being able to simulate a button press, but to do it very well. All right, let's talk about the removal of the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, shall we? Probably hands down the most controversial change of any of the changes in the seven. All right, so why did Apple remove the headphone jack? Everyone seemed to love it. What's going on? Well, I think the answer lies within Apple wanting to push us towards the future of wireless technology. And I get that, I do. I myself have migrated to Bluetooth headphones. I love Bluetooth headphones, I think, no wires, no hassle, so I love it. But I do know that there are people out there who just aren't ready for that switch yet. And I get that, I get that too. But Apple really wants us to push and push and push to the future, to wireless technology. And to an extent, I agree with them, but there's better ways to do it. Apple already has the new W1 chip in a couple pairs of headphones, and I have to actually own a pair. They're the, uh, the Powerbeats 3. They have the W1 chip in them. They're great. The connection is a breeze. Battery life is up to 12 hours at least. It works great. That would be a way for Apple to push people into the wireless world, but you don't have to remove the headphone jack to do it. I guess there was some controversy about they removed it to make the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus water resistant. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but to me, I think people would have rather kept the headphone jack. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I just think it happened a little too soon. I can understand why Apple did it, because early adopters like myself and other tech geeks out there, they're okay with it. They've more or less migrated to Bluetooth headphones. But like I said, for those who just aren't ready for that transition yet, because Apple does ship the phone with an adapter for the lightning port, but still, then you have to have another, another adapter, unless you have uh, multiple adapters, you can't charge your phone and listen to music through your headphones at the same time, which, speaking of, does that really happen a lot? Like, I'm wondering, how often does that really occur? Maybe I'm crazy. But anyway, I told myself I wasn't gonna spend too much time on this topic in this video. If you would like a separate video on my additional thoughts on Bluetooth, leave a comment and I will definitely make one for you guys. But for now, that's all I'm gonna cover on this topic. Now this brings us to the camera. Now, I've never really had a reason to be super particular about cameras on my smartphones. I mean, yeah, obviously I take pictures and I shoot video, but I'm not a photographer. I don't have 
I just don't have that experience to give you a true review of the camera. Yeah, it's great. That's that's just how they've always been for me. So I don't have much to say on this topic. I do have a couple things I wanted to mention. First off, the dual lens is really nice. It does add a little bit of clarity to the pictures I have noticed compared to my 6S. Um, also on the camera is the 2X optical zoom now. So when you open up the camera, you'll see the 1X button there. If you click that, it zooms in for you, but it doesn't crop the photo at all. It, you still have the full resolution photo. It makes it really nice and crisp while still zooming in on the target. So that was pretty cool. I used that a few times. It was kind of nice. Uh, the phone still shoots 4K video, obviously, which I used on a few of my recent vlogs and will continue to use. Another feature, which is still in beta, it's a portrait mode. And what basically goes on here is it blurs out the background so it brings focus onto your target. Really kind of cool. Um, it is still in beta, like I said, so it's, it's, it's not perfect yet, but I tried it a few times. It definitely works better outside. It will tell you if there's not enough light. So make sure you try to find a well-lit area if you're going to try the portrait mode. But it is pretty neat, and I think once they uh, fine-tune it, it will be really, really cool. In closing, I'm very impressed with the iPhone 7 Plus. I do agree with many people who have said it's not a huge upgrade over the success, but it's definitely noticeable. The combination of the new A10 chip and the extra gig of RAM you get in the Plus model, definitely noticeable when opening up existing apps, because more apps can now run in that extra gig of RAM, so there's much less delay when you're opening up a new app and switching to other apps that are still running. So that's been really nice. Now, if there's one thing I'd like to see Apple do, actually I'd love to see Apple do, increase the screen resolution. This is still a 1080p screen, even on the 5.5 inch Plus model. I would love to see a 1440 display, that would be great. 4K, uh, I can understand if you don't bump up to that resolution yet, but at least like a 1440p display would be really nice to add those extra pixels and get that screen clarity that I would really love. But other than that, overall, very nice phone. Definitely get it if you have like the 6. If you have the 6S, not sure it's worth it, especially since next year is the 10th anniversary, so the iPhone 8 or the 7S, most likely it's gonna be the 8, but that will be a huge change. So if you have the 6S and you're not quite sure about getting the 7, I really wouldn't say it's worth it to upgrade yet, unless your 6S is either broken screen or, you know, slowing down on you. Otherwise, I really don't think it's worth it to get the 7 yet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. They're always appreciated. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.